So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about iPadOS 15.1 RC edition because we've had it for a little bit over a week now and I wanted to let you guys know how the battery life is doing, if we found any, any new features that are out there that maybe were gone or overlooked with the original RC release early on and then also just how the bug fixes and performance issues have been working because I've personally been dealing with a couple of them like the storage bug, it still persists but then we also found like I said a new feature that I do want to show off to everybody. So. Without further ado, we got iPadOS 15.1 RC edition. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's get right into this video, everybody. This one's gonna be probably a quick one because again, with iPadOS 15.1 RC, it was mostly bug fixes, not a lot of new features, if any at all, but we did find one that I'm gonna show you. So if we go into the actual settings, first let's talk about the actual build number and things like that. So we're on 15.1. And the reason we know it's an RC edition is because of the number that we get here. So we're on 19B74 with no letter moniker at the end of it. And then also if any of you are using the new iPad mini or any versions of the iPad mini, we actually got an iPadOS 15.1 RC edition V2. So only the iPad mini was the one that got that V2. And I don't think there was anything different. Maybe they tried to do something with the screen wobble, but again, with iPadOS 15.1 RC2, on the actual iPad mini, there were no real changes, but we're gonna continue on here and see exactly what we got going on now. So the first and only feature that we did find that was kind of brought to our attention with, I think Mac rumors was the first place that I actually saw it. And it has to do around shortcuts. So if you guys aren't aware or aren't very familiar with shortcuts, shortcuts just allow you to automate some certain processes or let you actually customize your home screen and things like that. So just to show it off, if I click on settings, you can actually see there's gonna be a little drop down. So that drop down shows you that that was a shortcut that was run in order to get this icon to, again, look the way it looks, right? But shortcuts are used in a multitude of ways. So if I go into my shortcuts menu, the new one has to be overlay text. So I'm gonna go from the beginning and I'm gonna show you guys how it's actually done. So what you wanna do is press the plus sign and then you're gonna go into the actual search bar, type in overlay. You can see that there's two new overlay options. You have overlay image and overlay text. So if you click on the overlay text and then press on this little drop down menu, what this overlay text allows you to do is actually, again, exactly what it, what it sounds like. It lets you overlay text through a shortcut to create whatever you want. So for instance, you can set up a shortcut to put certain words or symbols or you know sayings on top of an image and then get that image put into your photo library. So again, you can change the font type. So here we have the system one set up, but you can go in and change the font type, change the font color, font size, add some rotation. You can outline the text if you want, which is cool. Allow the proportionality, so sizing, we want it to be proportional. So these are all the ways that you can use overlay text inside of the shortcuts menu and inside of like your shortcut ecosystem. For me personally, the only real shortcuts I use are for icons and then for quick little home kit things. So being able to turn off the lights, you know, saying good evening and making sure everything's turned off, good morning, everything's turned on. So that's pretty much the extent of my actual shortcut knowledge in terms of what I do. The reason there's so many is because every single one of the icons that I have in a different color need to have its own designated shortcut. But from a custom icon standpoint, it does take a little while, but once you have it set up, then it's good to go. But shortcuts overall, little by little getting more and more improvements. And I know that there's like a whole other world of Apple and iOS and iPadOS shortcuts that people are constantly updating and trying to figure out new ways to get things done quicker or in a more efficient way. And the next thing I wanna show you is actually the bug situation. So if we go into my settings and if I go into general, go into actual storage, which is I think where we were, so iPad storage, you can see, and I guess it's kind of fixing itself right now, but only 63 gigs of my 128 gigabytes are used, right? But here you can see that the bar is showing well over 80%, maybe even 90% usage. So that is the bug issue that everybody's been talking about. This is the first time that I'm actually getting it or maybe the first time I'm personally noticing it. But again, you can see that I'm only using about half of my storage, but it shows that I'm like 90 to 95% of my storage being used. And a lot of it has to do with apps and the main one, LumaFusion. But I know for a fact that I have way less storage of LumaFusion here because I went in and I deleted a bunch of junk. I went in and got rid of redundant files. So this number should be a lot lower. I'm gonna say it's a lot closer to half of that, if not even less than that. So again, the storage bug is kind of annoying, but the positive thing is that it does take in, on the back end, it does take in the fact that you have 65 gigs of storage. So if you try to so if you try to airdrop stuff over that's big in size, it'll still think you have 65 gigs versus thinking it has like 90, 95% storage used. So from a back end perspective, at least it still works. It's just on the front end, it's showing us something that isn't true. So hopefully that does get fixed. Maybe it takes a little while to load, but again, I've been waiting on the screen for a little while now and it still has not updated at all. And again, I even took a screenshot. So if we go into here, go into the library, in my screenshot, 63 gigs out of my 128 use and it showed the bar fully used up. 
which is something that just can't happen. It just can't be happening on iPad OS 15, but hey, that's what we have right now. And at least on the back end, it still works as it's supposed to. And then I'm gonna go into the settings. We're gonna go into the battery life, see how it's held up over the last week or so with this new RC edition. You can see we were running on red over here for a really long time. So let's go into a day, for instance, which, what day is this one? Saturday, we have about four hours of screen on time. It took up about 100% of my battery. Why? Because I was using YouTube TV and YouTube TV as a streaming service does take up a lot of juice. So on Saturday, obviously we're watching a lot of football, a lot of college football. Of course, my Miami Hurricanes got that 31 to 30 win. Sadly, I couldn't say the same thing about the Dolphins. But again, you can see four hours of screen on time, about 100% usage, two, and, two hours and nine minutes took up 42% battery on YouTube TV. LumaFusion, 28 minutes took up 13%. Regular YouTube, 12% was about half an hour. Did a little bit of FaceTime work there. And then let's go on a day like Thursday, where we got almost five hours of screen on time, and again, used up about 100% battery. Very LumaFusion heavy, and then NBA, because the NBA season started, have to watch my Miami Heat, try to get those wins. I'm a big sports guy, a big Miami sports guy, if you guys haven't noticed by now. But again, you can see that video streaming, especially live video streaming, apparently takes up a lot of battery. And again, I'm usually at max brightness. I'm usually always connected to the Magic Keyboard. I have my Apple Pencil on here. So my battery life, you know, I could probably do a few things to make it a little bit better, but no way I'm getting like six hours of, of screen on time if I make those small changes. So, but then on a day like here, where it's very little usage, screen on time, two and a half hours of screen on time used with Sidecar. So Sidecar is actually very good for your battery life. So you can actually set up your Sidecar for a very long time and then have to worry about draining any battery. As you can see, it took up, let's say 5% battery for two hours and a half or two and a half hours of Sidecar usage. And that means this screen is always turned on having some sort of Mac OS situation going on. And again, it's just nice to see that at least in the native side of things on the Apple side, you're gonna be able to get a lot of battery. It just comes down to when you start live streaming, when you use third party applications, it's gonna to start to drain your battery a lot. So again, three hours of screen on time on Sunday, YouTube TV, three hours, took up 99% of the battery uses that I was using. So, hey, to each their own. And again, last 24 hours, I just kind of hadn't charged it until today. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. Also, stay subscribed for some Pixel 6 content or Pixel 6 Pro content, because it's coming. And that is pretty much going to do it for this video, everybody. So like you saw, the RC edition has been pretty stable overall. There are some bug issues that are persisting. Like I showed you with my storage bug issue where I only have about half of my storage actually taken up, but it's showing me that it's all taken up with that one bar, which is kind of concerning. And I'm hoping that on the back end, it realizes that there's enough space to keep using it versus it being tricked into thinking like, hey, you actually don't have any, any more storage available, so you can't do anything, right? And for the most part, it's been the first thing, right? So it's been, hey, yes, I have like half of my storage filled up technically, but even though visually it looks like it's fully taken up, the iPad still acts as if it has only that 60 to 65% of gigabyte storage used, which is at least at that point, it's okay to still be usable. But again, hopefully Apple makes those bug fixes and improvements to the final release, because I think we're gonna be getting it, if not today, probably tomorrow or some point this week. So everybody will now be able to use SharePlay. They'll all be able to put those COVID vaccines into the wallet on their iPhone on iOS 15.1. So things are looking bright, and then I'm just hoping that in the future we get a, a nice little like wow factor with some of these new updates coming out. Because we do have Universal Control still kind of looming. It, it didn't actually release with 15.0, which is what we were told in the very keynote that Universal Control would come out. And I'm hoping it does come out pretty soon because I'm really excited to play with it. And then be able to use my iPad, not only as a sidecar, but still keep my iPad OS ecosystem and my iPad OS operating system running, but still being able to use them in between Mac OS and iPad OS. It's gonna be kind of mind blowing and I'm sure Apple's dealing with a lot of issues getting that going. But again, hopefully Universal Control comes with like a 15.2 or 15.3 update and it'll work well. But be excited that SharePlay is gonna be coming out soon. Get ready to use it with all your friends and your family so you guys are actually, even though not physically together, at least enjoying the same content together and being able to interact in real time about that content. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike. First link in the description below to keep your iPads protected. Really excited to be, always be working with them, and we're going to be giving away some of those paper likes very, very soon, so stay subscribed. But until next time, peace.